What's good, people? Said Mac here. Been gone for a couple of weeks, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm here. I've been working and trying to get some things finished and done, and and you know, I have a schedule and everything, trying to meet deadlines and things like that. I'm, I'm an audio engineer too, so I record a lot of people at different studios. I record at my spot as well, and I do a lot of mixing. Um, sometimes I do some mastering, and it just depends on the mix I get, whether or not I can call it mastering or not, because that's a whole nother situation and I do a lot of songwriting and a lot of production okay so I'll jump on here as much as I can and it's, it's pretty fun I like reaching out and sharing knowledge and um, I get more into my background and you know things I'm working on I don't like to talk too much but about it but it's, it's okay to kind of share some things that I, I've done and what I'm doing now and but anyway, I just want before I make a beat, I just want to jump into some music business things and let's and let's just talk about a couple of scams that's going on. So I have I had three artists last week. Yeah, it was three artists last week who were approached with these scams and one out of the three fell for it. OK, and we'll talk about those things. OK, so the first thing is let me just tell you this. If you have a couple of hundred followers on Instagram. Universal Records is not reaching out to give you a deal, okay? Um, there was a artist that I record, and the artist had got a message through, I want to say Facebook, saying that congratulations, um, we want to offer you a record deal. This is uh, one of the big giant record labels. Uh, let's just say, we'll just say Universal Records, okay? It was a branch of Universal Records, but we'd just say it was U UMG. It was UMG offering this uh, artist a, a record deal, okay? All right, so red flag, all right? So that's not gonna happen. It's not real, and let me just get into it. So you have two, 300 followers on Instagram. If you don't have a following, you got 50, you know, 100, you don't have this big, giant social media following, like nobody's gonna offer you a record deal like this is not the 1970s and the 80s where you can walk in and audition and get signed to a record label it doesn't work like that these days it's about showing and proving all right so that was the red flag so let me tell you something that happened uh to artists here in atlanta so the artist gets this gets the same type of email or text or whatever saying hey we want to sign you and they said, uh, you know, this the label we're gonna put fifty thousand dollars behind your project. That's your initial budget. But I no, they said we're gonna put sixty thousand. Yeah, it was it was a nice amount. But at the end of the day, they said, but to get it started, I'm the A and R. I'm gonna take this to the president of the label, and I'm gonna take your five thousand dollars that you put in, and then after you get after you uh, invest your five thousand dollars, the label's gonna put another fifty five thousand dollars with it. So all you got to do is just come up here and um, sign the contract and we'll go ahead and get going. Okay, new artist, up and coming. Nobody ever heard of him. Gets approached by this record label, by this quote unquote record label, who's, you know, one of the big three. We are uh, Warner Electric Atlantic or either Universal. It could have been either one of them. These A&R people, they use the major labels, oh, you know, I'm an A&R for, or the key word is independent A&R. So independent is, they'll tell you that they don't actually work directly with, they don't actually work directly for the record label, okay? So there's nothing wrong with being a, with an independent A&R. I'm an independent A&R. I'm not tied to a particular record label, okay? But I don't promise deals and sell pipe dreams and things like that. It's a lot of work and money that it takes, you know, to get noticed and everything. First of all, the music has to be good. So this artist's music, it, it was okay. You know, after I thought find out about the story, the, the music was okay, but nobody knew them. So they flew all the way up to this different city, all right? And they already had sent the $5,000. All he had to do was come up there to sign the contract. So he gets up there. In the middle of, of this town that he's never been from, artists is from here in Atlanta. You can probably Google the story. I'm not going to get into the name dropping and things like that. So the artist got to the city 
and actually was in the restaurant waiting on the a and r person to show up okay keep in mind they spent twelve thirteen hundred dollars on the round trip ticket okay they sent five thousand dollars to the a and r person to give to the president as a i guess like an earnest earnest money to say hey and then the label was supposed to get basically it was a it was fraud okay so the artists didn't get their money back nobody was there it was all a scam okay if you have one follower on instagram or a few hundred you're probably not gonna get off of a record deal it's about numbers 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 basically you got to go viral all right somebody sending you a letter email you know gassing you up oh you know i get it all the time artists i work with they show me these emails and these texts I, I, first thing out my mouth is scam okay do your homework you know save up hustle up your money save up and get you a lawyer get you an attorney okay do i have an attorney yeah i got an attorney do I use my attorney for everything no not for everything just the you know the bigger stuff the more the things that i'm not you know sure about and even some of the stuff that i am sure about i still have them go over it but um yeah so that's a scam number one uh number two i had another artist who got a text from this person who claimed to be one of the major artists uh, road manager and said I can get you a meeting with them because they're looking for artists to sign a deal with all right so what this person but he said I set the meeting up for you but you know I need my finance fee up front he said I, I looked all over the internet you're the best artist in the world that I've seen out of all the thousands and thousands of, of uh, artists that I look for and my guy the big artist this guy has sold millions of records okay um, I'll just say who the artist is. The artist, well, no, I'm not going to say who the artist is. But this person was claiming to be the road manager for the um, for this big time artist. He said, okay, send me $1,500. I'll hook you up. All right, so they, um, the team for this artist, he would come to my studio the whole time, you know, doing things and everything. Um, and uh, when they got that, that message, it's like they kind of, you know, even though I, I feel I was giving him his best music. But um, so they send the money and they go down here. They get they 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 fly down to this city, major city. Let's just say it's in, it's in the 305. You know what I'm talking about. And nothing down there is cheap. OK. All right. So they book a hotel. They, they book flights. They even get a rental car when they're there. OK. So now it's time to meet this. We'll just say he he's a he got little in front of his name. So they about to meet little that artist little you know who it might be they about to meet him time goes by and by and by this guy never shows up okay so they're out of the 1500 they're out of the money for the um, plane ticket they're out of the money for the hotel they're out of the money for the rental car okay i warned personally i said this is not how deals are made also with the other another example um this, this powerful organization that, that runs the world. Um, somebody sending out DMs saying, join this, you know, and we'll, we're will we going to give you millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars up front in a, in a car and this and that, blah, blah, blah. If you join this organization, we're going to make you a star. Okay. So that's a lie too. All right. So that's a scam. I don't care. You know, I know it's not true. I get the same DMs, the same crap in my message box i just swipe and delete it okay so i'm not even an artist okay so i get offered all this kind of stuff i get the offered record deals all the time like seem like i would have been signed a long time ago if it was the real thing but um so then they'll keep you know bugging you about it so one of the artists who's getting that from that secret society getting that offer from the secret society to join this group if you saw the new um, house party, you know what I'm talking about. The new house party with uh, with old dude in it, uh, Jacob, with him in there, with LeBron James. If you see that move, you know what organization I'm talking about. So this person is sending out Instagram messages, DMs, and emails, and everything, saying, "Hey, well, I make you part of this organization. We run the world. You run the world. Run the world too. Go ahead and sign up with us." Okay, so I actually had somebody who played around with that, and let's you know, let's just see how far this goes. So basically, there was a membership fee to sign up. Okay, 
So if you offer me a million dollars or whatever, can you just take the million dollars? Can you take the membership fee out of the million dollars? Okay. Also, this artist had 40 followers, literally. Okay. The one who did the test, who went through it. The other artists who, um, the other artists who got the, who came to me about this, about this secret society hookup. Um, this artist has about two or 300 followers or whatever, and less than a hundred subscribers on YouTube, but they got offered this deal. Same thing, they got offered the record deal and the secret society thing within all in the same week. Okay, so that's a scam, all right? So if you're not out there in the front, you're not out here hustling, you're not, not out here performing, you don't have a big um, social media presence, a big internet presence, and somebody approach you and offer you a record deal and they want to they want to send you paperwork to sign or meet you in well not even to meet you they want to just send you paperwork and have you sign they they don't they haven't met you they don't know your personality you don't know them um you haven't had anybody look over it you know but they they're making all these promises and like read the contract is it a real contract is what i was asked i'm like yeah it's a real contract but the person who's offering the contract does not actually work at that record label. That's some cat or some guy sitting in their mama's basement, probably overseas somewhere, gotten, going through Instagram all day, looking at independent artists and sending out the same message every day, okay? And people do bite, all right? It's just like when you're looking for a job and the job, oh, I hadn't looked for a job in years, but it's like when you're looking for a job and this service says okay we'll get you employment but you know you got to sign up with our service for 50 bucks or 100 bucks or whatever and then we'll get you a job that is probably a scam too you know I, i'm thinking it's a scam so just be careful on that um it's just so many things you know that you have to be careful of so basically you need to have the following okay it's not like back in the day where you can walk in to the A&R and audition right now the way the music business is it's almost like prove yourself first then we'll get behind you and then even after you prove yourself do you really need a major label after that okay but or a label you know it could be an independent label that has a nice budget but do you need a label at all you know um it just depends so what a label does especially a major label do what they do they put you out in front okay they make sure you got the highest quality so I noticed a lot of artists who were signed, let's say, I don't know, 10 years ago, and now they're independent. Quality don't sound as good. They still have good songs, but as far as the studio and things like that, the quality doesn't sound as good, like the mixing, the way it was mixed. And they, you know, they might have had Dave Posado mix their stuff before, or Leslie Breakaway or somebody, or Guru or something. But now they, they're in the studio and they're doing it, their own little thing, you know, but it's okay. That don't. That doesn't mean it's bad. It's probably not gonna sound as good, you know, versus uh, recording patchwork versus recording, you know, uh, with a inbox or something, you know, because that's just what it is. But a major label puts you out. They just make. They put your face out there. They they put your face out there. They they get the out. They get the Apple Music. They put you in the front. They put you in the front of Spotify. They, they got relationships with these companies who the curators, the ones who play the music, even with the radio stations. Oh, and I have a radio scam too. So one artist just put he just released a CD, not a CD, but he probably do about he would probably burn about a hundred CDs to pass out to those who want them. But he just released a uh, project, and one of the messages that he got was, "Hi, I'm." such and such and such and i'm a former dj at hot 1079 here in atlanta and uh i like your music and it's really hot it's like one of those the scripted things that you know they always use and uh he said i want to um get you i can get you radio play okay and but it, it'll only be a small fee he said i get you radio play it'll only be a small fee that's exactly what he told him okay so for radio play on mainstream radio, there's no such thing as a small fee, all right? So to push a record, um, one of my friends who, when they first did, uh, let's just say they had one of the biggest records in hip hop here, so I might've mentioned uh, Steve Gibson from Tag Team before. Let's just say, let me just give you some numbers. Um, 
I mean, you could probably on one radio station in one region, you can spend fifty thousand dollars easily on a campaign just to get your music on the radio, and that money isn't going directly to the record. It's it's a lot of things that go, and I ain't trying to blackball myself out of the music business, but all this is promotion and getting radio play. Just we'll call it a campaign, okay? So your radio campaign can cost you fifty thousand just to play it. And these numbers are just, I haven't checked the numbers in a while because I haven't been trying to get on mainstream radio in a while. But uh, let's just, just let's just throw some numbers out there. So let's say you want your song to play at 12 o'clock on the radio on V103, which is pretty big dog on radio station. OK, everybody know V103, been here for years. And, you know, play it at 12 o'clock. Not that many people listening, but you can still spend a grip. Okay, so nobody can contact you and say for a small fee, I can get you on radio. All right. So as an independent artist, there are so many different routes to go to get on radio. You don't have to be mainstream radio. I mainly listen to a lot of uh, non mainstream hip hop. There's some amazing artists out here. These, the, these are a lot of the artists that I target. OK, yeah. Oh, yeah. One day. Yeah, I already know the artists. I, the the signed artists, the, the big mega stars who I want to work with, who I'm going to work with, who I'm on the, the edge of working with right now. So, uh, but there's so many different artists out here. They get on the radio. Look at your, your college radio stations. Okay. The internet is basically a radio station too. Okay. So, you know, learning about the, how to get on a curated list and all that. Um, you know, there's just some things you, you have to research, but be careful and don't get scammed is what I'm saying. So nobody can promise you radio time or anything like that. Uh, a lot of DJs have gotten hurt um, for not playing people's music, even in clubs, you know. So you want to get your music played in clubs, you know, build relationships with the DJs. That's who you, however you handle it. Build relationships with the DJs. Those are the ones who break the music. Uh, get on, you know, these, you still got like online mixtapes. You got uh, allmixtape.com or mixtape.com. For all mixtape, it's an app. I may not be saying that correctly, but you can just go to your app store and uh, or your Google Play store if you have an Android and just look up mixtape app. And it may be five dollars or ten dollars. You know, I don't know how much it costs. I never paid or, or told anybody to get on there, but there there are ways to get play. All right. So what you don't want to do is first of all believe somebody comes i even had a friend i, I mean i feel bad because this was years ago i worked with him years ago and he got ill he was a, a artist manager and ran back in tune you know me and remedy working now remedy is a, one of the artists i'm working with now uh back then probably a few years ago he said i can get you a meeting with such and such he can get you a deal all you got to do is give him 7500 i said so i take him 7500 i'm gonna get a record deal that's what you're saying like He's going to get signed. Is that what you're saying? So that ended up, uh, we didn't even go go through with it because I knew it was some bull crap. Um, a couple of other things. You do have some major producers who are hot and they're working with artists right now, independent artists. You pay a little fee to work with them. I think, I think that's great because these are like, you know, guys who are, you know, they, they might have had a hit as late as two, three years ago, you know, or a big hit or you know some major releases as, as far as a year or two ago maybe even five years ago but they're working with artists you know for a fee it's just like hey you know i got the platinum you want to work with me it's gonna cost you five thousand i'll even get online with you and help you push your music i don't think that's too bad long as the the, the producer uh the music person long as they do what they say they're gonna do go ahead and go through with it produce the song Help market and promote it, you know, with your name side by side with the artist. I don't see nothing wrong with that. You know, it, it's going to cost you some bread. It, it happened to my nephew. They approached my nephew with it. He asked me, was it real? I said, well, I don't know if it was that particular producer that was reaching out to you because everybody has a team, you know, who runs their social media. And his company might have reached out to you and offered you something, you know, and usually the producers who got you know, good names, they're not just going to reach out to anybody who's not, you know, they're not ready, they're not talented enough. 
um, you know, like my nephew has, uh, I'm not gonna say my nephew's name because when he blow up, I don't want nobody saying I did it <laughs> or he blew it because of some, I pulled some strings or something. But yeah, it, it'll be like that if he's talented enough. But he, he's pretty talented though. So this producer reached out to them, offered the deal, said, hey, you know, I wanna work with you. Um, if you have a team and a, you know, and a budget, we can work together. I think I can help take you to the next level. This producer said this, I think this producer was legit with no scams. He didn't promise him a record deal or anything like that, or he didn't make any promises. All he said, you know, I used to get 50,000 a track. So I'm gonna work with you for 5,000. Save up your, your income tax refund or your, or your money that you work or have you get your money, save it up and I'll work with you. I don't think that's such a bad deal. Okay, so that's one. And but just the track record of the artists, you know, the other producers, just look them up and everything is a Google away. Even with that deal with that Universal uh, Records thing, they said we got Drake and we got all these artists signed to a label. All the, every artist that was in that little spill that the person that the scammer sent, they're not even signed to that label. Okay. And then why would they want to? And, and then <laughs> the label was in a whole nother country. So why would you fly to a whole nother country? You know, when that label has a division here in the U.S., why would you fly to a whole nother country? All right. Hook me up with the parent company. I'm not flying, you know, this and that. And normally they want you to pay for the. They want you to send money for the plane ticket. And I've seen that. Um, this girl paid money for the plane ticket. She sent them um the money for it to my send us this and we'll pay for the rest. Got to the airport, the ticket was fake. I mean, you you know, check your tickets before you drive down to the airport, especially Atlanta Airport. It's, traffic here is crazy. That's why I like to stay in the house. But um, yeah, they she got to the airport and the ticket was false. And the person blocked their name, or they blocked the number, uh, changed their number, blocked the girl, the girl could never contact them again got up for the plane ticket money so if they sending that that message out to let's say um a thousand users a day or a thousand musicians a day and 10 of them hit and they hitting them for 300 bucks it's three grand easily okay it's a scam yeah nobody's gonna give you a record deal just based on because you know just because okay it don't it does not work like that most artists independent artists are not ready i'm just gonna say it you're not ready okay and let's before we before we even get into the, the following let's talk about artist development okay you know um these artists development companies or people i'm gonna say people i know one artist they paid 25 grand they came up with 25 grand i don't know what kind of whatever they came up with 25 grand came to find out it wasn't about nothing but they paid the money Artists got frustrated. Uh, no deal was made. Uh, nothing happened. It was just a terrible deal. Like they fell for it. This person said, oh, the artist is so good. And to me, the artist was still in development. The artist needed singing lessons, need to learn how to work on the stage, you know, need to know how to uh, stage performance. Walk in the room, be a star. Like all those things, if you don't have it naturally and you got it sort of, those things have to be developed. You know, how to talk, how to interview, you know, choreography, things like that, depending, depending on what kind of artist you are, you know, uh, getting in shape to be able to perform. Because most of these days, the, the show money is where the money is. You know, I would say even more than the streaming because Cat Who Hot, he can make 50000 a show. Easily, 10 grand. You know, that's that's a nice little come up. Uh, but if you sign one of those 360 deals, like the last deal scam I'm going to talk about, uh, you're gonna lose 50% of that. So the other artists, this company contacted them on Instagram, say, hey, we saw you perform in the club, we wanna offer you a deal. And the difference with this deal is that they was giving up a cash advance, okay? And when I say cash, I mean literally a cash advance, a five-figure deal, all right? So we wanna go ahead and hurry up and sign you. And so what happened after that is that a friend of mine who you know, the artist came to him because he, you know, one of my friends, he does music too. So he came to him. He said, yo, I'm going to, uh, you know, let me let my people look at it or whatever. And 
you know, so what should I tell him now? I said, well, tell him, first of all, don't sign anything without a con- without a lawyer looking at it. OK, Do not sign that deal without a lawyer looking at it. I don't care how much cash they putting up in your face. OK, so he was supposed to meet the guy on a Thursday. This is our talk on Wednesday. He goes and meets the guy anyway and signs the deal, get the cash. OK, um, the guy's lawyers on the phone on the FaceTime. Right. OK, so. And while they're explaining the stuff to him, they're going over the contract every line by line. Um, the artist is initialing every little section. He's initialing every little section in the guy who owns the company is like, yeah, we understand. We understand. I'm like, we that's your lawyer. OK, this is designed for you. So let me make this quick. This ended up not even being a 360 deal. I call this a 720 deal. OK. Sure, you got some cash up front. Everybody having or maybe in some f- kind of financial difficulty right now. All right. So basically what he signed in the deal was a uh, certain amount of time. It's a, of course, it's a one year with so many options after that. The record label can opt out of this deal. The artist can't. OK, they can get out of this deal if they die, if they get physically hurt or if they go mentally crazy or something like that and even after the deal is done or something happens when you, if you die or something the label or the company is not they don't have to give anything to your estate okay all right so red flag there uh, what was some some of the other points in here and you know i may be kind of letting cats out the bag and I don't even deal with these kind of companies anyway. Okay, they can't come to me and try to sign me as a producer, or nothing like that, because I don't. I don't even deal with that. I deal on higher levels. Okay, all right. So, but um, so they got the the deal. Okay, so the and this was a record label exclusive record recording contract, and it was a uh, quote unquote co publishing deal. Okay, so. Normally in the real music business, these two deals are not in the same contract. All right. So now we cross collaborating. You know, we, 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 we're crossing two different things up. So basically, usually with a publishing company, a publishing company gives you money up front, which this place did. OK. And a record label gives you a budget up front. Sometimes they cut it directly to you or they put it in like a, you know, an escrow to, OK, we're going to deduct this and we got to pay this producer, this engineer. We're going to take this out of here and what we got left. Here's a little bit to go in your pocket, but at the end of the day, this money comes out of your thing. You have to recoup this, okay? So they did give him a little bit of money or whatever, but it was a um, co-publishing deal. But check out the co-publishing deal, though. They own all the publishing, 100%. You know, in music, you got 200% writers and publisher share, okay? So sometimes it's normal for a label's affiliate publishing company to ask for I'm saying you got to do it but they ask for 50% of your publishing to because they are going to be exporting the music getting it played getting it placed getting it in getting it on TV and movies syncing sync license they're going to be doing all that collecting your money uh, clearing samples whatever it is that they do okay so they'll do that but it's for a period of time okay five seven years if everything reverts back to you after a certain amount of time. This was a perpetual deal. This means perpetual, and we looked at the word perpetual, you can look it up right now, is is without no end. Okay, without no end. So the records you the record that the artist got out now and what they plan to make within this contract period, or everything belongs to this company. All right. So they got all their publishing. Check this out, they got 50% of the writer's share too. Okay. That is unheard of. That is not normal. Okay. No, nobody gets your writer share. All right. So, I mean, unless it's, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to talk about who I deal with and all that. But a record company should not be getting the artists publishing, first of all. You know, if y'all do a co publishing deal, let it be on a publisher share where they get 50% of the publishing. Okay. Or maybe even 25. It just depends, okay? But with the writer's share side of the game, that's, that's the writer's money. 
you know, that's the writer's money. Okay, so that was a red flag right there. Um, and I looked at all the artists that signed to this to this label, and none of them on the radio. Like they just, it's it's like they never should have been signed. It's not. It's like they they shouldn't even be on a record label because they were doing just fine before that. And I looked them up before. I don't see any big differences between. But what you basically, basically signed every the image and the likeness. Okay, uh, anything that you do in the music business, yep, they get fifty percent of it. Okay, so it's saying that any publishing or whatever they splitting it with the or anything for sales or streams and it really you're looking at streams these days nobody's i don't know anybody who's going on iTunes like to buy a record like i'm gonna buy this record i do it for stuff that i really like or i would actually get the vinyl like i got a uh, nas uh, king disease three the actual vinyl sitting right over there on top of my record player i will buy the vinyl sometimes so this they has to do a mechanical royalties but they they didn't there was no mention of mechanical royalties on here so with this deal right here it really don't matter it really don't even matter okay because they already got 50 they basically got 75 percent of the publishing money okay so how, how did this company get their money back okay so, so yeah they just gave them five five figure cash advance notice cash no check not traceable no receipts or nothing but what they'll do, they, they'll send you to their people. They'll send you to their people to, uh, you just giving them money. They, they, the cash advance is it, not, it's not for you to go out and pay your bill or, or you know, oh, I got any need to pay my rent. That money is not for that. That money is meant for you to pay for your studio time and to pay producers and engineers and for your video, uh, everything. Everything that needs to be done to get your music out there. Um, Radio promotion, they're supposed to come out of that money. All right. So, you need a radio promo coming? Oh, we got one. We, we usually use this guy right here. But at the same time, it's tied to the record label that you signed with. So, they're actually getting the money back. And that that uh, that amount of money goes pretty fast, too. And I know how much money it was. I'm not going to say. It would be a, like a lottery to some people. But for that contract, 360 deal, they own you 100%. And everything I said I was gonna make this video short but I'm kind of going over a little bit I'll probably break this up but for the amount of money they got he should have gotten uh, half a million dollars or a million dollars at least okay at least a million dollars for this record deal it's not that many record labels not even the major unless you're on your second or third album you you know you went platinum diamond whatever they're giving out that kind of money and then it's still not even a bonus it's still going toward you know what you need to do because you know you want to get bigger and bigger on, on each project okay so but yeah so basically um he he right now he's working with a you know a lawyer and this has happened man where we at we in what june the end of june middle of june six i'm, I'm gonna say this is about the seventh time this has happened but only out of the seven seven artists that came to me with this only uh two of them actually signed the deal okay so um and those artists who didn't sign the deal they still got things done and they're at a they're they're at a good place where they need to be as far as in their music career so um i'm gonna actually make a beat on the next video but those are some things to think about if you don't have a bunch of followers and you just social media is like real like you know like to me i'm gonna say ten thousand let's just say fifty thousand followers fifty thousand hundred thousand followers um 150 200 000, 300 000 subscribers on youtube you got five hundred thousand plays on one song you got a million plays on one song yeah it might be it might be a real deal if somebody approaches you it might be the real deal but again if you you don't have the social media backing in the what's called social proof to prove it you're probably getting approached by a scammer okay oh and a couple of you know major producers back in the day they had this consulting thing the way you can consult with them i'm okay with that too you know it's a couple of guys you know and i like to say i'm here and there but i'm, I'm still growing myself um talent wise and, and making moves it's, it's a few things that's, that's happening 
I don't like to talk about it too much because I'm not a name dropper, but you know, you know what it is when it when it jumps. Uh, playing your video games, you're probably hearing my music. You know, you're watching TV, you're probably hearing my music. Um, you, yeah, you probably hear my music. Okay, um, some of the records back in the day, you probably heard my music. Okay, so. Real quick, um, I don't even want to get into that, but ghost production is when you make, when you do beats and you just take the cash and you just sign it over and they don't have to put your name on it. You know, that's what ghost production is. Ghost writing too, you just get paid cash. No credit, no nothing. Okay, so I know you heard my music. So it's cool. We'll talk about that later. Uh, a lot of things going on right now and everything's gonna jump off really, really good. But just be aware of these scams, okay? People are taking advantage of your dreams. They are taking advantage of your emotions. Um, one artist, this artist really came to tears when I told him. One time I said, this is not a real deal. Like they sent, I said, look, I got the same email. I said, look, I bet you this artist right here got it too. And it, it just don't work. Even the artists I was dealing with, you know, these people came to to this. They came to this artist. I'm not saying it's a male or female, cause they would know who I'm talking about. All right, and I don't want to. I'm just giving examples to try. Like I always do, I try to save people, but nobody wants to listen. They don't want to listen. Okay. And this group of people came to this artist and said, "Hey, you know, me and this artist had plans. I literally had a, a something set up for this artist, and it was really it was a budget, basically." You know, with people and people who sign checks, who make the deals, they will they will watch it. But you have to have a budget to put your stuff out there so people can so you can be visible. So I had uh, secured that budget or whatever to do it. All right, you know, let's make make a little EP. You know, all we're gonna do is this. Next thing you know, this person is saying this is my team you know whatever with pictures with people and i know they came to this person with oh you know i played live for such and such and i got this and this this and that in the industry so you got to be careful though because once you do some snake stuff in the industry it's a small very small industry and nobody gonna want to fool with you you know once you get that reputation nobody gonna want to fool with you so now nothing's jumping off for you now you want to create these scams to try to take advantage of these artists who are only trying to come up they're only trying to get in the game. They don't have lawyers. They don't know anything about the music business. Okay, so what do I know? I know the music business theoretically, and I know it from experience. Okay, and I'm still experiencing the music business. Now, I do have an attorney, and I have uh, done some things. I've probably been in one bad deal. Okay, that was selling a beat for $2,500. Okay, it was an outright sale. It was one of those buyout joints. All right, the label got to make, you know, say they produced and made it. I sold the beat for $2,500. Now, keep in mind, this was back in, I want to say 2002, maybe. It was a few, it was a few years ago. I sold the beat for $2,500. Then the joint just ended up going platinum. Okay, but I ain't know. I ain't know. I didn't know. But now I just would have gave him the beat, took two hundred dollars, left my name on it. <laughs> hey, be another platinum plaque on the wall. But it's okay though that those things happen. We grow and we learn um, about what to do and what not to do. And if you're new to the game, like you really, 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 really got to do your research. You know. You get these fake emails and scammers like Google them, try to Google them, try to look them up. Just say such and such record scam. You know, you can do percent, the name of the record label, percent, enter, scam, put the word scam in there. Or, or record um, exec A&R scam. They still doing it. People getting beat every day. I know somebody, they signed a deal uh, yesterday. They did a seven, I call it a 720 deal. So, you know, and, and it's more than one company. It's not just one. It's not just one. Okay, you sell these dreams. Um, I'll talk about another one of these other companies later. 
uh, well, the type, I'll say the type of company because it's, it's more than one of them. The way you pay this monthly fee to, you know, be in these showcases in front of A&R people from labels and um, though that contract is hard to get out of. And this, you know, and they, they don't really do nothing for you. They just take your money every day. They might send you to their cousin studio or to a little affiliate studio. You pay the two hundred dollars, then the, this company they getting the kickback. They getting one hundred and twenty out of that. You know, it's at one time when I when I had my studio, I was uh, I had got a slew of artists for a company like that, and I'm like this this thing. You know, everybody started grieving about it. You know, and I, and I just decided I didn't want to be affiliated with that company anymore. I don't care. They were bringing me a lot of business. Oh yeah, they were bringing me a lot of business. Okay, but um, it was basically they would pay that company for the studio time. Then that company would pay me for the studio time. So let's say my um, at the end of the day, like their total bill is let's say twelve hundred dollars. This company is charging the artists twenty four hundred dollars, and they're giving me twelve. See what I'm saying? I got a check cut for twelve hundred, but the artist cut that company, this so-called A and R artist development company, got the artist to cut them a check for twenty four hundred dollars. Okay, so network, get to know people, don't get scammed, don't let nobody, you know, scam you like that. You know, there was a situation with a little radio play uh, a few years ago, promising radio play, one of the artists I was dealing with, you know, fell with it, fell for it, it was. Somebody I knew, and I thought it was legit. Okay, so, but ended up backing out of that deal because you know when you look at the <laughs> dude was showing these reports of people that he so called got on the red, like it was so photoshopped and fake. You know, um, don't get scammed. Okay, use your use your common sense. All right, what major record label is going to offer you a deal? You don't have no following. You don't have anything. You don't have a you don't have a team. Like nobody's telling you if the music is good or bad, or you don't have an image. You know, you don't have basically you don't have that social media presence. Like nobody's gonna be no Warner Brothers is not gonna be offering you a job unless it's just some just super rare and somebody working in the A and R department and it's you know and it's their niece or nephew that they're, they're just special and they just know it. But even then, they still may have to show and prove before they even get a deal so that is what it is and I will um, I get back with y'all I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make this beat and uh, have any questions just hit me up um, you know just uh, do your research and everything and be smart about it okay alright if if it's too good to be true it's, it's probably too good to be true guy had an NPC you know, uh, 3000 LE <laughs> for sale on Reverb the other day just to see what it is. I'm like, well, if something happened, I knew it was, I, I should have known it was a scam. Okay, dude is in Australia. All right, an MPC 3000 LE for, for $900? No, sir. Cheapest MPC 3000 I've ever bought. And the regular one, the regular model, the, the cream color, 25. 28 the le version 32 35 4000 last one i bought i paid 3200 for it the le the black one okay but they had it up there for eight nine hundred dollars you know but it ended up being a scam eventually you know and the bar got their money back so I, I knew who actually bought it all right so and it was just something that you know we knew that once you buy something from Reverb and then the deal goes sour, Reverb will take care of you. Okay. All right. So just just learn to recognize scams. Recognize scams. I'm not the only one who's talking about this stuff. And I really don't care, you know, if anybody get mad who in the industry or these these fake companies, whatever. I don't care. Whatever. Come on with it. You know, but because I'm not working with you anyway. I'm working with real legit people. Okay. I have one of the largest publishing companies but when like i say i'm not name dropping i don't want to get into all of that but all i'm saying is just look out for the scams use your common sense don't get don't be sending nobody western union nobody 
Don't let nobody cash out you you no money to, to sign a deal. Don't don't do it. Don't do it. Trust me, you don't want to do it. You do not want to do it. I know we, you know, everybody need, you know, we need this and we need money. And trust me, in the long run, um, you know, like Scarface said, if he if he known, <laughs> if he knew about the music business, he never wouldn't have even signed a record deal back in those days, you know, and must respect, you know, to rap a lot. But he said he never would even sign a record deal back in the days. If he would have known, or he would at least negotiate it. Because, you know, with, you know, Ghetto Boys was undeniable. And I hope Willie D and Scarface, I hope that, you know, they worked it out. DJ Ready Red is another sleeper I'm going to talk about in my uh, producer series uh, for uh, giving these producers their flowers. You know, along with JD, Jermaine Dupri, DJ Ready Red, that's a bad boy. Also, go back and listen to this stuff. Mike Dean, like, he was. Back with them, like you know, last thing. Well, the Beyonce, the last Beyonce project, uh, Mike Dean is all over that. So those are, you know, some people that I, I study and, and look up to and everything. But you know, we're approaching 600 subscribers at a thousand with all this sound stuff. I'm thinking about giving away a nice analog mixer. I don't know. We'll see. But keep sharing and subscribing. I might even give away five of them. Who knows? I might even just you put in the right con comment. I might even just give it away. I might give away more than one. I don't know. Or I may have a, a option to choose from. Like when you go to the carnival and you reach this level and you win a prize and there's three things in the prize, you can pick one of those. Yeah, I give you first bid on those three. And then the other two, I give uh, the, the second person who wins the draw or the contest. I don't know what I'm going to be. I might just do a random drawing. And then we have a third prize. It might even be a um, classic NPC. Who knows? I don't know. Who knows? But I'm a giving person, but I just want to thank you all for sharing the videos. And for those who follow Bodo Producer, and when he mentions me, you go and subscribe on my page, like right there. And I really do appreciate that. That's love.